A court found him guilty of silent prayer and ordered him to pay a nearly $12,000 fine. You can now get convicted of a crime for silently praying. This is fine. A man in Britain was just convicted of a crime for silently praying outside of an abortion clinic. This story sounds too crazy to be true, but it is. Let's take a listen to a news report from the Christian news outlet EWTN. In the United Kingdom, a British Army veteran has been found guilty of silently praying outside of an abortion clinic. In 2022, Adam Smith Connor was praying for his unborn son that died from abortion two decades prior. Two police officers approached him, asked him what he was doing, and informed him he was violating the law. A court found him guilty of silent prayer and ordered him to pay a nearly $12,000 fine. In a press release, Smith Connor said, Today, the court decided that certain thoughts, silent thoughts, can be illegal in the United Kingdom. That cannot be right. All I did was pray to God in the privacy of my own mind, and yet I stand convicted as a criminal. The Alliance Defending Freedom UK that defended Smith Connor says this is a legal turning point of immense proportions and blasted the neglect of basic freedoms of speech and thought. So guys, the terms Orwellian and dystopian and all of that, often referencing the George Orwell novels 1984 or Animal Farm or these other futuristic uh, dystopian societies where there's an authoritarian government and people are policed down to their thoughts and words, that's where phrases like thought crime or speech crime come from or thought police all of that is incredibly overused. I'm guilty of this myself. People just throw those kind of accusations or comparisons around like candy on Halloween, and it's a bit much. But this is a case where it is absolutely appropriate. This shit is absolutely Orwellian and dystopian, more so than anything I've seen in some time. I mean, how is this actually a real thing that actually happened in a supposedly free Western country? I, I'm honestly, I'm not shocked by much these days, but this story did shock me. He just did nothing that in any sane society should be considered a crime. He didn't hurt anybody. He didn't steal anybody's property. He didn't trespass. His silent prayer was not on the property of the abortion clinic. It's not like they can say he was trespassing or something. He wasn't. He didn't even shout at the women who were going in to get an abortion or try to convince them to change their mind. And obviously, I don't think that should necessarily be criminal, but he didn't even do that. He silently bowed his head in prayer and the British government is treating that as a crime. To the British people who watch my show, I'm sorry, babe, I'm sure you're lovely, but this is why we fought that war, to be free of y'all and your dystopian authoritarian nonsense. I mean, this British man who's now got to pay a massive fine and has a criminal record is the real victim in the situation. There are no actual victims from what he did because, it, again, it was silent. Nobody was harmed or affected except him. In reality, the real criminals here are the people in the UK government who are making this kind of thing happen and writing these laws that criminalize this kind of silent thought. It literally is thought policing and oppressing people and violating their human rights. I mean, freedom of belief, freedom of association, freedom of speech, and freedom of religion are all fundamental human rights that are just being trampled all over by the government of the UK. And this isn't even the first time. It's not like we can just say this is one crazy story that happened. No, as a reason reports, multiple British people have been convicted of crimes for silently praying. Guys, it does not matter whether you're pro-choice or pro-life. That's not what this is about, right? This is about the freedom of speech and the freedom of religion and the freedom of thought. And the same thing would be true. I mean, this same logic could be used to criminalize pro-choice demonstrators silently thinking bad thoughts about the church outside of a church or something or a pro-life event. I mean, it's just insane stuff that no sensible person should support. But you might be wondering, like, why should Americans really care? Of course, the UK is a little crazy. That's why we fought that war. That's why they caught that smoke and they took that big L. And yeah, why should we really care what happens to them? Well, one, I just care about what happens to our friends across the pond. But more importantly, I view the UK and other European nations as a 
good in, in an intellectual sense, but disturbing in a more reality-based sense, example of what can happen in supposedly liberal democracies, free, in quotes, I guess you have to put that, free countries in the West, when you don't have the strong protections and safeguards that many Americans take for granted here. If we didn't have a First Amendment that would block this kind of thing, any law criminalizing this sort of behavior would be struck down by, on, in the courts under First Amendment grounds. If we didn't have that protection, this kind of thing would absolutely happen here. Heck, we have a vice presidential nominee who, uh, Tim Walls on the Democratic side, who keeps falsely claiming that hate speech and misinformation are not protected by the First Amendment. And we have a Republican nominee, Donald Trump, who wants to punish media outlets when he doesn't like their reporting and keeps demonstrating he really has no respect for the freedom of the press. It's not really a stretch to think that if you're willing to cross those boundaries, you'd also be willing to criminalize people's thoughts. Of course, the First Amendment protects us from that fate, but only so long as it's enforced and upheld by both a faithful judicial system, which is under attack, particularly from the Democrats who want to pack the Supreme Court and rig the judicial branch and eliminate it as a uh, meaningful check on, on executive and legislative power. And also, if it's upheld by a culture of free speech, ultimately, if we become a society where 80 or 90 percent of the population doesn't support free speech, the institutional checks and balances, the systemic guarantees, none of that will be good enough in the long run. If the people's values change, then it just becomes a question of when, not if, the legal checks and balances and protections are eroded. So the dystopia unfolding across the pond right now is not just something Americans who are supportive of the pro-life cause should care about. No, not anything like that. It's an ugly reminder to all Americans of the fate that could await us if we allow our First Amendment rights to be eroded away. But what do you guys think? Do you think we could end up in this disturbing kind of place one day in the U.S. in our lifetimes? Or, or do you think we're going to hold and be strong against this kind of censorship and dystopian stuff? Let me know what you think in the comments. I do take the time to read the comments every day, and I pick a few to respond to in every episode. Plus, if you leave your comment with a super chat or a super thanks, I'll definitely respond to it on tomorrow's show. Uh, <laughs>